Hi, in this video, I'd like to show you how to deal with file input output in visualbasics.net. So basically how to write out a file and how to read in a file. And we're mainly going to be dealing with text files because that's ultimately um, you know, the most important part of um, the course. So let's get started. So um, what I'd like to do is I'd like to introduce you to the um, reading and writing text files with the stream reader and writer. So that's one way we can do it. We can use the stream reader and writer. And another way is to use the file class. And they have their advantages and disadvantages depending on you know what you want to achieve. So um, the first one I'll do is I'll talk about the stream reader and the stream writer. Now all of these functions require us to import the systems.io library. I'll not require but we can. All of these things are in those libraries. We don't have to import it. We can use uh, the IO prefix, and I'll explain a little bit more about that later. However, this is the most important part, the steps required. If you wanna make a file reader or writer, uh, or especially file writer, for example, there's generally three steps. You create the file, and you specify the file name. You write into the file, and then you close the file. So that's how we're gonna write a writer. A reader is the opposite. You would read in a file, specifying the file name. You would read out the lines of the file, and um, you don't. And you and um, you'll need to close the file as well. Else, you know, um, you 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 have clashes if you try to read it again. You're going to get some errors there. So we want to follow a nice kind of a nice a nice pattern here. So let's do that. So what I've done is I've created a uh, new, what is this, a new project and I've called it file input output. I'll just set that as the startup project. And um, right now we've got nothing here. We don't really need anything here. Um, but what we could do is we could put a text box here and we put a text box here. And what we could do then is click an arrow here, and make it multi-line so that we can put stuff in it. And we're gonna call this just txt info, it's probably good enough, txt info. And let's create a button called we'll call that one write btn write to file write to file and then let's display that's in the text property we'll go write file writer all right um for uh, and then we'll do that one yeah all right so so we're gonna run this We can put some text in and then we could like click that and then it will create a file for us. So that's the idea. So we're going to program this button. So we're just going to double click into it. Okay. All right. So to create the stream writer, there's really two ways to do it. You could straight away imports, imports system.io. And then from then on, you could dim stream, dim some kind of stream, uh, we'll just call it a writer, as a stream writer equals new stream writer. Uh, and then we give it a, uh, some kind of, well, there's a few overloads here, there's seven overloads, let's find the one we want. Uh, this is the one we want, we want the one where we give it the file name. So let's call this uh, info.text. And there you go. So I've just created a stream writer called writer. That's the type. This is the actual object. This will not this this will not work if this doesn't exist. So if I turn that off, now it doesn't go, it loses that green, so it doesn't know what that is. If I turn that back on, it knows what this these these particular objects uh, types are. Now you don't need this. I could delete all of that and reference this with IO. All right, capital IO. So I can put capital IO 
and it works the same way as importing system.io. Actually, the full the full name is system.io. You can write that whole thing in there, but you don't actually need to write the system. You just write IO and it already knows it. And you notice the system kind of goes gray. Gray means you actually don't need to write it. So you actually don't need to import it. This kind of imports it already for you. All right, so stream write. So we create a writer. We create a file called info.that. And what we're going to do is we're going to write a few things in. So what I could do is I could write things that are inside here. So I can give this some text. I can go, um, I can write like a letter. So, um, um, well, let's make a, a, a bit of a letter here. Let's go. Um, um, you have one prize. Prize. Let's just write, you have one prize. All right. You have one prize. So, what I could do now is um, write that into the writer. So, I go writer is the object name, which is this thing. And this thing has a number of different things that we can do. If we press dot, there's a bunch of things we can do. I'm just gonna go purple here, purple block, and see what we can do. Let's write line. Let's let's write some let's write line. We're gonna write line and we're gonna write whatever's inside the txt info text, which is which is the very thing inside here. Okay, we're gonna write that into it. And then what we're going to do is, we don't wanna forget this. And this is really important. When you when you um, deal with stream writers and readers, you need, when you finish, you're happy with everything, you need to remember to close it. You need to remember to close it. You need to close it. If you don't close that, it won't work. So you need to close it. And that's really important. Don't forget this. Don't forget. All right, not forget. Um, let's try that. Oh, before, and also before, and, and since we want to try that, um, I want to see what's inside the file. So what I'll do is, I'm going to load this um, this directory. I'm going to, have to load this directly. I want to see if this file was created and it should be created in a debug folder. So uh, before I do that, what I'll do is I'll just load the debug folder. And if you want to load the debug folder programmatically and you'd not need to find it, because you have to like navigate and find it. You, there's a code to actually load the debug folder uh, to see what files are created. So what we're going to do is we're going to go, we're going to type in uh, di diagnostic, di diagnostic, diagnostic dot process dot start because we want to start the, the uh, folder. And what we're going to start is we're going to start the uh, directory dot oh just I can't remember where it is system dot directory was it system dot io ah yeah so it's io dot directory io dot directory yep yeah. io dot directory and then we're gonna get the current directory that we're running in current directory that we're running in and we're just gonna run that I don't need diagnostic process dot start we're happy with that so process.start and then in brackets io.directory.getCurrent directory. Let's just run that so that it pops up the directory that the debug folder is in. I just click on there. And there there's there's our folder. And 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 now we can see this, we can see the file getting created here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to turn this off because I've already got my folder happening. Don't need it anymore. Oh actually I can just run that at the end. And then I can just open up the folder again. Why not? So what we'll do is we create the file, we write something into the file, we'll close it, and then we um, open that directory to see if the file's there. And there it is. Do you see how it popped up? So you just created the file there. So that's the file. Let's start. Let's go inside and have a look. You have won the prize. There you go. Now um, you can write line. You can write. You can write other things. So so um, you, so you, we might want to go write 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 line. Um, we might want to write um, the uh, Mr. Hem. So we want to add a few lines to it. Be Mr. Hem. Um, you have won a prize, and then maybe we, after that we go write. 
right, line, right, right. I'll use the right just to show you what right does because there's two ways you can do it. You can write from in, in that and then I'll go right again from and on and see what happens there. Let's run that Let's see what happens. Okay, the folder, let's go, oh, sorry, let's have a look. So you notice here, um, Dear Mr. Hem is this one, and then what happens is inserts a new line, and then goes, and then produce, and it puts in whatever's in here, you have won a prize, and then um, write, write the from, and then write again, writes a non right next to it right next to it so right line will enter the line for you see how it's got a bit of a line and in between here there's no right line so therefore it just writes it as a sequence and you notice i put a little space in here just to because i know what's going to happen right if you want an extra line you could put let's say we wanted an extra line here um like here what we could do is we could i don't say that um go right right about right and we could write a uh, environment. Let's see if this works. Environment dot new new line. Let's see if that works. Uh, so let's go. just write it in nice capitals. Um, Visual Basics is not ca capital case sensitive. Let's try that. And there you go. You got the new line there. All right. Cool. So, uh, so that's basically the steps involved. You create, well, wrong, wrong language again. You create the um, file, the file, and specify the file name. Specify, specify the file name. Then you can use use write or write line to fill the file with text, some kind of text, and then you want to close that file. So don't forget. Uh, this writer, you can call it whatever you want. If I change that to cool writer, you know, make sure the rest is cool writer. So it's whatever that is, is what, you know, call it whatever you want. All right, great. So that's how you write a writer.